Okay. Two years ago this week, uh, we were, um, when I say we, what happened was my Bridge Day team leader, Dean Wiseman, in the early fall, late summer of 2020, 2019 rather, put out an email to all of us in the group asking, hey, who would like to go vertical caving in Vietnam? And the response was, me, 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 me. <laughs> so um, after some initial meetings and logistics planning, uh, several people dropped out. So there was just a, a group of about 12 of us that ended up going. But we went over to Vietnam and I will show you where we were. Vietnam is located almost exactly opposite on the planet from where we are, 12 hours time difference. So it's quite a haul to get there. Um, we flew from out of Minneapolis over to Tokyo was where we connected. Originally it was supposed to be South Korea, but we got bumped out of there due to increasing COVID at the time, which was not really a thing in the United States yet, but they were talking about it, but it was over in Asia. So we went through Tokyo over to Vietnam Closer yet, you can see the red spot there is on Phong Nha Ca Bang National Park. And that's a map of Vietnam there. Vietnam is actually just a very narrow country. It's kind of funny. It, it hugs the coast, gets a little wider at the top there where Hanoi is, and then spreads out at the bottom where Ho Chi Minh City is, which was the old Saigon, but very narrow in the middle. And we were right about halfway, a little bit more than halfway closer to the top than the bottom. In what, in what would have been North Vietnam back in 50 years ago during the war that I could not believe we ever even wanted to fight there because the people there were so wonderful. On a globe, if you look at Vietnam, you can see that Hanoi, the northern tip of Vietnam, is right at the topic of um, cancer. And Ho Chi Minh City is down closer to the equator. And we were very close to Da Nang. If you see Da Nang there on the right, uh, the picture on the left we flew from Hanoi down to Dong Hoi. So, is my, yeah, my air works. Can you see my air here moving around? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so we flew into here and this was the neighborhood where all the caves are. Now, if you remember, maybe about 10 years ago, there was a huge discovery of Hang Son Dung, uh, which was uh, the largest cave in the world, essentially, is how it was advertised because of the huge volume of the rooms, we are right in the same neighborhood. So that kind of gives you a feeling for where we are. Just a shot out of the airplane. This is flying over in Northern Japan, very rugged and mountainous, very beautiful terrain. I believe that's Mount Fuji that we flew over. Um, don't quote me on that, but I, I think it was. Anyhow, so here we are in Hanoi. There's me and Dean Wiseman toasting beer. On the right-hand side, you see a dish called pho, and this is almost what we ate exclusively over there uh, in Vietnam. It's, it's a very common soup-like thing with noodles, and they'll put vegetables in there and little meat chunks of either beef or pork or chicken. Um, it really is very good. And you gotta be able to master chopsticks, which amazingly I was able to do, so anyway. The people in Vietnam were just wonderful. Um, we hooked up with a group of guys that went out bar hopping in Hanoi. And uh, these folks were just happy to see us. And it's like, were we ever fighting a war over there? That just seemed insane to me, but uh, we had a great time. There's me and Robbie Jones. On the left, okay, you know, I work for a power company. And so I saw this cluster on a pole and I just had to take a picture of it like, OMG, what? the F is this, but okay, yeah, third world country, sort of, I guess. You see similar stuff down in Mexico. This is the Vietnam War Memorial. Um, very sobering there, and on the left you see a wall with all the list of names of people who uh, perished in the war. And just a, a little bit from, from that. But yeah, no, no discussion of Vietnam is complete without just a mention of what happened 50 years ago. So anyhow, the next morning before we flew out to, um, flew south, we did a little tour of uh, uh, Hanoi and just went sightseeing. 
various sites along the streets. Typical cafe. Vietnam is a communist country. So as such, you have to be very careful of what you say about the government, but really anything else is free speech. Um, it's not the same kind of communism that you find over in the Soviet Union or China. Uh, it, it really, the people don't really feel like they're oppressed. I mean, it really is, uh, it was a very different feeling than what I would expect in a communist country, but you, you, you can't say your president sucks. I mean, you don't want to say that, but any, anything else is pretty much fair game as long as it's not critical of the government. Representing our favorite cars conservancy. More shots around Hanoi. Some of these were taken by Dean Wiseman on a trip he did in 2019. And so a couple of these next ones are those. Yeah, these are some of shots from when, more shots of uh, uh, when Dean went down the year before that he took around the city. On the right there is an in-cave shrine. And he could tell you a whole lot more about that than I could because he went there. But it really is very beautiful if you see the pictures. Anyway, like I mentioned, we had one more flight to do out of Hanoi, and uh, there's Randy Dusenberry sleeping in the airport. <laughs> Our flight was late, Bamboo Airways. Um, I think we had like a four hour delay, so a lot of us were jet lagged as heck too, because like I said, this is 12 hours opposite of, you know, United States, Eastern time zone. This is where we arrived right outside of the park. And we spent the night here after our flight. When we arrived, we were taken in buses over to this little resort um, and spent the night there. Woke up the next morning to this beautiful view of these rugged mountains and beautiful little waterway there. This was the outfitter who we worked with. His name is Jungle Boss. Really a great, great group. Uh, if you ever go on a tour of Vietnam, I highly recommend Jungle Boss. I got to give the plug. But um, they were the ones that outfitted us with all of our food, um, any tents, camping gear, and enough Sherpas to help us carry their stuff and our stuff. Um, they run standard trips through where we were going to go. They make it a two-night tour, but for us, we did a four-night tour because we were doing expo extra exploration. One of our missions was to help them find more stuff to take tourists to. So here we are, uh, the guy there with the hat and the, the yellow um, bandana neck thing there, that's Stephen Fry. He's down there quite a lot and he was going over with us where we're gonna be going, what we're gonna be doing, just some pre-trip planning before we all slept off into the jungles. Take nothing but pictures, leave nothing but footprints. They are extremely environmentally conscious over there in Vietnam. Um, they're, they're very careful of their wild areas and, and very sensitive to any um, unnecessary human disturbance. So here we are on the road heading south over down, or I guess it would be heading, heading west. Yeah, heading west into a uh, Kabang National Park through the Vietnamese countryside. And there it is, Phong Na Kabang. Like I said, they're environmentally conscious except for when they got to put up big sign. <laughs> Just sights along the way. Uh, those mountains, I mean, if you look closely, that's all karst. That is just like rugged as heck, it's amazing. Like I said, this outfitter, he does tours. Um, and this is kind of like the round trip tour he does. And it's kind of a larger picture of what we did, but you can see we start here. You hike eight miles, eight or nine miles through jungle over to here where you got to swim through a cave and you camp here at the Kong cave, Kong collapse camp. This is, we did camp here. And then you hike over here, cave, 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 camping here, camping in the cave, and then hike back out. And that hike, that hike was a killer. Um, we had several people go down on the hike, strong people like Randy Dusenberry. I mean, he just collapsed at one point. 
it, it, it was a ball buster. You're out there in 95 degree heat and humidity with a 50 pound backpack going up and down these steep hills for eight miles. It, it was killer. It was about all I could do, and I'm, I'm not afraid to say it. This is uh, one of Jungle Boss's promo pictures. You see Jungle Boss has his name down there. A couple of his promo pictures are in here. Here's another one, just of the area. Here's a map showing exactly what we're gonna be doing. Now, over here in this yellow oval is that, um, Hang Son Doong, which is what I was talking about before. That's the biggest cave in the world that they found maybe 10 years ago. So you can see we're right in the same neighborhood. Excuse me, this is the, ti this is the Tiger Cave system. And specifically, we're down here in this little red circle area in um, Hangover and Hang Pygmy Cave. Uh, the word Hang means cave in Vietnamese. So you see Hang in front of a lot of these cave names. A little clearer map of the Tiger Cave system. Um, Kong is right here, the Kong entrance. It's a, it's a big, huge dome. Like for those of you who have ever been to Mexico or something similar, maybe Never Sink might be a better example for people with something you're familiar with. If you're down looking up at this huge hole, that's essentially what Kong is with cave entrance at the bottom, cave passage, and you're coming through that cave passage to the bottom, bottom of this huge pit. Um, here's Hangover Cave, and then Pygmy Cave is here. We did basically all of this, and it doesn't really do justice because there's open jungle that you're walking through in between. Now, here's a picture. There's an air, like a, a drone footage of Kong, and this is part of uh, uh, Jungle Boss's promo footage. And here's what it looks like down inside when you're looking up at night. So anyway, upper left is the Jungle Boss bus that took us off into the jungle. And there's a busload of happy cavers who don't really fully realize yet what is going to be uh, in store for them. Um, there we are offloading our gear and getting ready to head off into the jungle. And it is literally jungle. And oh, by the way, that road that that bus is on, historical fact, that's the old Ho Chi Minh Trail from the v Vietnamese War. After the war, they widened it and paved it and made it an actual road. Okay. There it is. Shots along the hike. Um, just, I'll spend a minute here. You can see, looking at that terrain, it really was rough in places, especially if you look upper right there, that picture. Um, lower right, we called this guy Generator Guy. This guy was like a freaking superhero. He's doing all this. It's one of Jungle Boss's people with a freaking generator on his back, just running up and down this stuff. I'm like, oh my God, this is crazy. But they had to carry a generator because they needed to have light. We actually had light at night for when they would feed us dinner. Another one of our uh, friends there from Jungle Boss. Again, wonderful, wonderful people. There's more shots along the hike. This was a easier part of the trail, just looking up at huge, huge karst mountains. I mean, shoot, look at that stuff. And after a full day of hiking with extremely tired legs, boy, were we glad to see this. On the right, cave. And this cave is where we would swim through. Now we did have inflatable boats and the infl inflatable boats carried our backpacks. So our gear stayed dry while we swam through cave. And here's our camp on the other side. And this is at the bottom of Kong pit. We camped here for three nights while we surveyed this whole pit. Um, and we found some interesting stuff. Hey, Carl. Yeah. Is that tiger country? No, no. I don't know why they call it tiger cave. Um, there really was no dangerous animal wildlife that we had to be afraid of. Tiger already been hunted. All gone.
On the right is a typical dinner. Um, they would spread out a green tarp and we'd just all sit down and they'd serve us, you know, bowls of pho, mostly pho and various additives to put in it, rice and meat chunks and whatever. And if you walked away hungry, that was your fault. It was really very good. On the left is a picture of where we came out. Um, you saw the picture where we started swimming. This is where you come out here when you're done swimming and you come up over here and okay yeah now I'm at the bottom of Kong, Kong huge Kong pit left is looking up <laughs> like I said um and, and right is just kind of looking around down at the bottom it really was a very very it was a huge thing uh never had been fully surveyed which is part of why we were doing just a, a scour all around the edges of the thing to see what there was to find if anything This is Tiger Cave. On the right, you see that yellow purple arrow is how we swam through. And Kong there is where we camped. On the way back, what we did, we, we, we came, back, came back through here. Now this doesn't really show it totally, but um, there's a way you can get through here and then go out the swift exit. That's what we did on the way back. Another aerial shot of Kong itself, the three, there's three eyes to this thing. And one of the things they wanted us to do, if we could, was find a way to get up to that top one and rig a rope. And unfortunately, we couldn't. Uh, the terrain was just too rough. Um, we split up into uh, three teams of four, and I was not on the team that was going up to there. I was on the team that was surveying the pit. Um, Dean Wiseman, uh, Randy Dusenberry. Um, Robbie Jones and somebody else went on that one. I forget the fourth person. But these were shots they took from what they were doing when they were up hiking around trying to find stuff. And you can see they're all pretty high. And they did repel out of that. As you can see. Just amazingly beautiful stuff. And again, stop me if you have any questions on anything. Um, the arrows there on the right, um, let me get my cursor out of there. The arrows on the right show, I think, what they were doing. They didn't get up to that one high pole on the top right there, but they did get up to that some of that other stuff. And that shows, those arrows show where they were. Um, on the left is a sketch that I think Dean did basically showing how to rig what they rigged and where they went. Yeah, there's another thing. That's where they were, the yellow circle. Snake. Now, while they were doing that, uh, there was a team of us, me, Sharon Shireling, Laura Demarest. We were surveying the pit all around the edges with distos and tapes and whatever we had handy to do with. I mean, that thing was huge. The distos were a huge, huge help. But at one point I saw this hole. And so I said to Sharon, hey, Sharon, you have a light. Go in that hole, see what you see, does it go? And she goes in about a hundred feet and she said, oh yeah, this goes. Okay, we're gonna come back to this. Um, continued surveying. In the end, we went back to, we poked in a little farther and holy shit, it was a virgin cave off of that big, huge dome pit. We asked Jungle Boss and his people, hey, does anybody know about this? They were like, oh, we never saw that before. You know, and they're the experts in that area. So if anyone was there, they would know because this is really, really remote stuff. And, you know, not many people get in there, only the, the locals who know about it. They said, no, this, this has never been, never been seen. So we found a, a virgin cave off of this big dome pit. And there we are checking out the new Virgin Cave. So I think they named Python Cave. Probably for the snake. We did have to rig a few hand lines in there to get through. Some really cool rimstone and formations in there. 
pretty stuff. We got down to a place where there was actually some nice walking passage. Yeah, and the next day, there's a, this one's a pretty big room we found. Um, the next day we took the Jungle Boss people in and they said, no, this was all brand new. They were really excited whenever they saw this. One of these shows the map we made of it, but I think that's coming up. Anyhow, so we spent two full days there, three nights. On the next morning, which was uh, Wednesday, was it Wednesday morning, Thursday? I can't remember, anyway. One of those days there, I know the rest of the world was going to hell and we didn't know it because we were off the grid. We had no idea what was happening COVID wise. <laughs> <laughs> But like I said, we, we backtracked then, swam up to here just as far as this room and over to here and then out the swift exit on the way to Hangover Cave. And here is a shot, I'm gonna back up. Right here, you're in the water and you come out of the water here, you're on you know, a big slope up. You can climb up these, this breakdown you're looking down in the water. And that's what I'm on. I'm, I'm on the breakdown looking down at the water there to a boat that has some of our gear. Really cool, uh, pretty flowstone stuff in there. I took this picture, the patterning in the rocks I just thought was really, really cool. And there is the exit, the swift exit out of um, Tiger Cave. And so like I said, from here, we're heading over to Hangover Cave. That's where the next back, batch of cave pictures are. Somewhere in here, there's a, I thought there was a little map of the Python Cave that we did. Here is the entrance to Hangover Cave after a short walk through the jungle. This particular day was mostly traveling. Down into Hangover Cave. There's a shot looking out the entrance that I thought was pretty cool on the left. The Hangover Cave was really cool. This is probably my favorite of the three caves that we did. Just the immensity and the, the, the formations, it was so difficult to capture them on in pictures. I tried, but it was just incredible. At one point, there was a pit, a big, huge pit. And one of the things they wanted us to do, they being Jungle Boss's people, they didn't have the ropes or the vertical gear or the know-how to get down to the bottom of this pit. Okay, we do. <laughs> so we did. And I, I went down to the bottom of it. I didn't push it. A couple other people did because you had to get in the water and I didn't have my wet stuff on right here at this point. A couple people did, Dean Wiseman, Sharon, and, and another person. They pushed and they actually found another, another entrance to this cave that no one had known about. Came back all excited as hell. So this is something for future exploration that we've got to go in and document and do a better job of mapping. Because like I said, this day was mostly dedicated to traveling. So we didn't have all of our, uh, the, the time or the stuff we wanted to do to do a full map that day. There's a rest stop, just, just looking at stuff. It's just huge in there. And here we have some Vietnamese cave life, a little spider. This is a picture that Richard took, which is colorized and quite dramatized, but um, it does show the beauty of the cave. It really, it was incredible in there. So there's the exit of Hangover. Um, we exited, it's starting to get toward evening and we had an evening hike over to Pygmy Cave. 
Now this map is backwards showing what we were doing, but we were actually moving this way, coming down toward Pygmy. But there's a picture in Hangover Cave and shot in Pygmy Cave. But Hangover and Pygmy were both through trips. And there we are in the evening heading into Pygmy Cave. Inside Pygmy. On the right, you see a couple guys there with what looks like a rope. Um, one of the things that we were charged with doing is, like I said, Jungle Boss takes people through here. And there's one dicey area where they were really very uncomfortable. Um, they didn't feel like they had it rigged right. They really weren't sure what to do. And so that's one of the things that we were tasked with is coming up with a better way to rig hand lines down there. And we were able to do that for them. Uh, they, they were very happy with it and said they felt much safer doing it with what we had rigged up for them. Now we're getting over toward near where we camped. And this is toward the other side of Pygmy. Um, on the left is a picture just of this, uh, like a staircase type thing. It was just amazing. <laughs> I'm looking at these pictures just remembering, you know, the, 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 the OMG factor of this whole thing. But like, here's the entrance. These little things down there, those are people. That kind of gives you the, uh, the immensity of it. This is our camp that we had set up inside the cave for our final night out in the jungle. Now, like I said, it was four nights in the jungle, three were over in Kong, and this was the final night. So there I am, I went up on that staircase thing, uh, taking pictures just out the entrance. And those little things down there are tents. So yeah, that was really just to give you a kind of a scale factor of it. <coughs> Excuse me. And this was a picture I just, I brightened it up a little bit so you could see better um, where our camps were, here's where we're eating. Um, yeah, like I said, the immensity of it is just incredible. So there we are heading out. That's looking back into the entrance where we had just camped. Here is a map of, I believe this is Pygmy, where we went on through. And for the hike back. We went back a different way. And as you see on the left, some of it wasn't all horizontal. Uh, yeah, it was pretty rugged. But on the right there, you just see the, 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 the countryside we're in. You know, and the whole time we're hiking through this, I'm thinking, we honestly tried to fight a war in this? I mean, seriously? I don't know. It's no, it's no wonder that we didn't, uh, didn't succeed. And quite frankly, they may be better off if we didn't. I don't know they seemed pretty happy with what they had going on over there. And once we were done, boy, was this bus a welcome sight. And that bus had beer. <laughs> and boy, did that beer ever taste good. On the way back, um, we passed back through Japan and there was a nice bar there. This one, I had to get her a picture. She was just such a wonderful, wonderful uh, girl working at the bar, serving up beers. And so I was like, oh, I've got, if I take your picture? She's like, oh, no, it's okay. You know, please. And so, yeah, it was just a, a wonderful place. And on the left there, it's just some of the stuff we were reading at the Japanese airport. So these were some of the goals and accomplishments. This is what Dean had listed. Uh, initial inventory, exploration, and survey of the karst features in and around the Kong entrance. Uh, I guess that's Great Saudi Cave. Um, Great Saudi Cave goes off of that, but that's also where Tiger Cave comes in. Um, 
discovery and survey of Python cave and the Kong Doline. Uh, yeah, the Python cave was what uh, Sharon and I had found. Established anchors and route for canyoneering through trip of unnamed cave above Kong entrance. Um, that was some of the stuff that those guys were doing whenever I said they were hiking up to those upper upper holes in Kong. Initial exploration inventory of unsurveyed passages and hangover, new entrance and confirmation of major leads in nearby and nearby cave. Uh, yeah, that's where I said we repelled down that pit that they didn't know how to get down and, and Dean and Sharon went ahead and, and found that. that they, they came back so excited. Um, assisted in improvement of anchors for handline and additional safety for commercial operations in Pygmy Cave. Uh, that's like what I was saying before where we rigged those handlines so they could more safely traverse it. Major unexplored leads remain. That is a very true statement. There is so much over there. And part of it is because it is so remote. Like I said, eight hour ball buster hike. Um, not a lot of people get into there. <laughs> Uh, that last thing was, and this was really key for what Dean was trying to do, laid the groundwork for a long-term relationship with the Vietnamese government uh, between American cavers and the Vietnamese government. Um, Canadian cavers already have somewhat of a relationship, and we want to do improve our relations also. So that was one of our one of our major goals there, and we do believe we were successful when we presented all of our stuff to the officials on the way out. Here is, uh, I guess, one of the pencil sketches of the Kong Doline that we had done the surveys of. And here, okay, yeah, here's sort of it is. Here's Kong. This is where Python Cave goes off, although that's not a very, very clear um, map of anything. Again, there's the, the Kong stuff and the, the stuff in purple circles, the stuff we didn't get to. Possible routes to it, I guess. Anyway, here's our group. There's me, Eric Edelman, uh, JP McClendon, Laura Demarest, Sharon Shireling, Rand Heaslett, Zach Snyder, Lori Schindel, Randy Dusenberry, Robbie Jones, Chris Nuremberger, and Dean Wiseman, our illustrious leader. A lot of these folks are also my bridge day team. And from Jungle Boss, some of the key players were Lulu Dung, who was boss, Hui Jang Jong, who was captain. Uh, both of them spoke English. Um, Leo, not so much. And that's that. That's an amazing presentation, Carl. That really is nice. And the photographs are great, too. Thank you. Spectacular. Did you, take, did you take a lot of those? I took a fair number of them. Um, stop video. There we go. No, it's not. How do I get out of this? Stop sharing. There we go. There we go. Um, I took a fair number of them. I didn't take all of them. Um, the original presentation that Dean Wiseman did, he did this at the 2020 virtual convention. Um, mm. His presentation was a little better animated because like I said, I, my cheap ass computer with a cheaper ass graphics card doesn't handle uh, a slideshow all that well. So I have to manually go through it. <laughs> but so then it doesn't it do the animation. Great. It looked great out here in cyberspace. And there you go. 